Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. If that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. So in my course that I offer to help people go through their own clutter, one of the questions that comes up time and time again is how can I help someone else with their clutter? Because you know, whenever you start working on your own space, if you didn't already, you're gonna start noticing maybe your family member's place when you go over there that's not quite so clutter free or that you just learned an idea or a strategy to use that you would love to help them out with, you know? So today I'm going to share how you can really help someone with their clutter because helping someone else to declutter can be a thoughtful and supportive process or <laughs> it can be a disaster, right? So here are some steps and tips to consider. Number one, discuss their goals. Half of the battle with creating a clutter-free space is the vision. Getting that clarity is always the hardest part and that clarity more often than not can come from having a conversation about why they wanna declutter and what benefits this could have for them without being pushy. You know, try to let them do the talking. You don't even have to have the solutions, just be the sounding board. Future pacing is really key for any change. People have to see, they have to be able to see a future. And also that'll help you to understand their motives and understand more ways that you could potentially help them aside from the discussion. Number two, offer visual inspiration. Share pictures of inspo that would work great for some of their rooms or scroll through Pinterest together. You know, sometimes getting that visual inspiration can get people excited and then they have something to work off of, kind of like a roadmap. Number three is to create a plan or help them create a plan. So planning things out can be boring. It's a lot more fun with a friend. Write out areas that they wanna tackle first, what they wanna use their spaces for, and when would be the strongest time for them to do this? Like when are they gonna have the most energy? Or when is the weather gonna be the most ideal? Plans make things real. And they also take away a lot of the overwhelm and the anxiety. Number four, you could help set up. You could bring over boxes and labels and label the boxes as, you know, keep, donate, sell, discard, recycle. The sorting system that they can see can help them to make decisions more easily. Number five, you could help guide the flow. So focus on one area or category at a time. A lot of people try to do too much at once, right out the gate. And you can make this process so much easier by guiding them to a specific drawer or to a specific cabinet so that they don't get overwhelmed. So many people just don't know where or how to start. So you could take some of that decision fatigue off of their plate. Number six, ask guiding questions. Help them to make decisions about items that maybe they're struggling with by asking some questions like, when was the last time you used this? Or does this item bring you joy or serve some kind of a purpose? Or do you have more than one of these? You know, like would someone else get more use out of this? Just try to ask questions in a positive positive way that's going to help to move the needle along. Number seven, encourage limits. So remind them of their overall plan and goal and encourage them to stick to their limit goals. If their goal was to have space in their closet for a laundry hamper, then encourage them to stick to that goal by not holding on to more hanging clothes than there's actually space for. You don't need to force it or get irritated, but just encourage and remind them of the goals that they set for themselves. And we want to be sure that we're always, of course, maintaining boundaries. So while you can offer suggestions and guidance, of course, you need to respect their final decisions about what to keep and let go of. That can be the challenging part. Number eight, celebrate progress. If nothing else, you are a cheerleader. Acknowledge their achievements as you go along. You know, say things like, wow, look how much we've done already. This looks amazing. Or, oh my gosh, this is looking so good. Number nine, you can coordinate donations or disposals. So assist with the logistics of donating items or arranging extra trash pickups. If you're willing to, you could even do a drop off for them, or you could just call and help schedule a donation pickup. You know, this can add a little bit of a accountability to help keep things on track. And also it just eases a lot of the uncertainty for the other person. Number 10, be an objective sounding board. So of course, while offering your opinion and guidance might be helpful, remember to stay objective and avoid pressuring the other person to making decisions that they're just not ready for. Number 11, be the timekeeper. So set a specific time frame and do time checks and reminders to keep things on track. It also helps to prevent burnout. And number 12, you can help with digital decluttering. So if you're a techie person, like say maybe you're helping your mom or your grandma with their computer, you can offer to set up some digital decluttering solutions, some kind of automation, maybe a photo backup for all of their digital pictures, you know? Number 13, you could do a safety check. Check for expired items, hazardous materials, or cords that might be strung across the floor, just anything 
something that might pose a safety risk. Number 14, offer practical solutions. So if the person is struggling with organization, doesn't know exactly what to do with a certain set of their categories, you can offer some practical solutions like storage containers, shelves, hooks, help them to maintain that organized space. Number 15, you can group similar items for them. So this is not decluttering their things for them, but instead you can just organize their items by category. And this can help a person to see how many duplicates they have, or maybe how much they have of a certain category so that they can make informed decisions. But also grouping items by use can be a helpful organizing system. Number 16, you can document the process. You can take some before photos, some during photos, and definitely some after photos, really just documenting the entire decluttering process because seeing that transformation can be really inspiring and motivating to people. And a lot of times as you're seeing it happen, you kind of forget what it looked like before. Number 17, you can find and research professional help. In more extreme cases, that might be from the help of a therapist, or it could just be helping them to find people to hire to help them move things or to help them clean and go through things if you're not able to physically be there or help yourself. Number 18, lead by example. There is power in social proof and being the change that you want to see. If you've gone through your own decluttering journey, you can share your experience and some of the lessons that you've learned, or you can just lead by example in general and let that be a powerful motivator to the people in your life. Number 19, you can do some hands-on sorting offer to physically assist in sorting through different items. This can often speed up the process and make it less overwhelming for the person. Number 20, you can offer physical moving assistance. If you are able physically to move things that they're not, you can help to move and rearrange furniture or lift heavy items as they need in order to optimize the space. Number 21, you can offer a two-person rule because sometimes it's just helpful to have somebody else present to provide an objective perspective. Like, what are your thoughts on this? or I think this, what do you think? So offer to be that second opinion when they're deciding whether to keep something or whether to not. And obviously that's only if they really want a second opinion. Number 22, research and resources. If the person, for example, is not sure how to dispose of certain items, you could do some research to find the appropriate recycling or disposal methods. Number 23, you can create a decluttering playlist. And I would even add to this by saying that you can make the process fun. So you can curate a playlist of up and motivating music to play during the decluttering process, or you can bring over a couple of pizzas and some drinks and just make a little decluttering party or something out of it. Just do something to help make the process more fun and enjoyable for both of you. Number 24, you can help organize a charity drive or a garage sale for items that the person wants to donate or sell. And of course, this could even be on a more broad or larger scale. So if you're already a part of some group or community, you can help all of them at once by organizing some sort of a larger scale charity or garage sale. And number 25, you can offer educational resources. You can share articles or videos or books about minimalism or decluttering and organizing that might inspire that person. Maybe you see something that inspires you or that offers a really cool outlook or a really cool decluttering idea or a tip that you've never thought of or heard of before. You can share that. You can either share it directly with the person or share it on your social media media feed where they're likely to come across it. You don't have to be quite so direct if you don't want to, but there are tons of ways that you can share inspiration and share what other people have learned with the people that you love and that you think it would help. So remember that your role is to support and assist, not to dictate or make decisions for them, which actually makes your role so much easier. You're not doing the hard part. You're just taking some of the heat away from them. You're making it easier to make decisions, giving them some guidelines that they can go through being that person that's a sounding board or a second opinion or a cheerleader. Hopefully this gets the juices flowing. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I release new videos every Tuesday, and so I will see you next week.